This is a live and learn kind of situation. I'm gonna show you guys where I messed up at. This is a four and a half inch offset rim with a six inch rough country lift kit. And I messed up putting spacers on here. So I had problem clearing the brake caliber on the rim. The rim would come into contact with the brake caliber. So I had to get spacers, but the problem was, was I couldn't get any thread to catch on my lug nuts. So I couldn't use a quarter inch spacer, but that's all the space I needed to clear this was a quarter inch, but I couldn't get my lug nuts on here. So what I did was I bought an inch and a half spacer that sleeves over my existing lug nuts and pushes my tire out. So now I have six inches of back spacing, which is great. It gave me a really wide stance, which is awesome. But the problem was is I cut back my pinch weld, okay? Cut back my pinch weld and when I turned, cause this was so far out, when I turned in, I had clearance. But as soon as I hit a bump at full lock, it shoved my tire into my pinch weld. Brand new tires and here's what happened. Those are all the way down. Rip that one completely off. It actually happened all the way around the tire. It's just worse in some spot than others. So, <coughs> what I'm doing, I know I should pan around, but what I'm doing is I'm pulling off those inch and a half spacers and I'm putting these quarter inch ring spacers on here. So I thought originally my issue was my lug nuts, my studs coming out the hub weren't long enough. So I couldn't catch thread. And that's the reason why I couldn't put my rims on with that spacer. No, the problem was my lug nut. It was a 21 millimeter socket to put that lug nut on and it was too big to actually go into the hole of my rim to bolt it on there. So I went and got these spline sockets much thinner i think they're around a 17 millimeter but it has a special socket for it because they're spline and i can actually catch about eight rotations so probably eight threads roughly and that's plenty to be able to hold this on here and if it's not and it breaks off <coughs> well i'll make a video about that how it was a bad idea to run spaces all together well those one and a half inch spacers i went off-roading with it we off-roaded all day long we i mean got video on it you guys seen it we're out there for hours never hit my tire but when I was at work leaving the other day, I turned my walk, my tire full lock, hit a bump, and it shoved my tire up into that pinch wheel, and it just cut the living hell out of it. And I heard it when it happened. It was just a da -da 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 -da. I got out and looked. Sure enough, there it was, just a cut all the way around it. I was just kind of like, crap. So I'm going to try to put these quarter inch spacers on here, and I'm going to see if it works better. And my whole problem was these. I know a lot of people don't run spacers, don't run spacers, but I run them on my wife's truck and they're two inch spacers. And I, we pulled a camper all the way to Big Bend, which is like almost 700 miles from us. And we pulled that camper all through the back country, all through that back country. Like it wasn't nothing going up steep grades, loose gravel, rock, you name it. I haven't had a problem yet, but we only got 4,000 miles in the truck. So as it goes on, I'll make an update video on the life of the truck. If I ever had a problem with spacers. Okay. So before, you can see where the pinch weld's at now, okay? Where my finger is, you can see where it's at. Before, the pinch weld was actually, so it's right here, but the pinch weld was actually over here because the tire was so far over, the pinch weld actually lined up right here on the tire instead of on the edge. So when we had the tire cut all the way like this, this pinch weld, you can see that, this pinch weld was right up against the tire, maybe a quarter of an inch up against the tire. All right, Richard, get up there and jump. And now, at full lock. All right. Turn it back just a little bit. Right there. All right, do it again. All right. So now it doesn't come into contact at all. So it's a lot better than what it was. Um, Hopefully this is good enough for the trails and we don't run into any issue. And if it does hit, it's gonna barely hit compared to what it was doing before. Because like I said, you can see uh, the cut line, right? 
don't know if you can see in the video or not, but it's right here. There's a cut line right there. Because that pinch weld, it was sitting right here. When we had the tire full locked all the way, it was sitting right here lined up with the tire. So when the tire would get, when the truck would come down from the suspension, it would cut in that tire. But now the pinch line, the pinch weld's here. When you turn it full lock, it's right here. So even still bouncing all the way, it doesn't even come into contact. Then when you rotate the tire back, it's hop higher, so it still doesn't come into contact. I don't know how good y'all can see that in the video or not, but it makes a huge difference. So I think I might be able to save the tire, but the only downside is I had to scrape all the wheel weights off of every tire because they put the wheel weights right up against the inside of the spoke. And yeah, there's no room for those. So I'm gonna have to probably go get my tires rebalanced. Yay, another $60 for me to spend. So I don't think wheel spacers are bad or good. I just think they are what they are and they're used for what they're used for. I unfortunately got a rim that I couldn't get on my truck because of the way that the spokes were designed and how thick my brake caliber was. I messed up and went with an inch and a half, cut the hell out my tire, way too much backspacing. My wife has OEM, so there's like a, uh, the rim is flush the outside, the lugs are flush the outside of the tire. I don't know what the offset on, on that is, but it's all the way to the outside. On this one right here, it was way too far to the inside and it just cut my tire. So I went with a quarter inch spacer. It's probably gonna be just fine now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully so. So I don't have to spend any more money or time messing with this. But like I said, don't make my mistake. So pulled off all the wheel weights because they want to fit because the brake caliber where they put the wheel weights at and took it out up to 60 miles per hour. No front end shaking, vibrating. The rear end's not vibrating or shaking, nothing at all. So it rides pretty well for having no wheel weights and no balanced tires. But with how lugged up these tires are, I didn't imagine it'd be that big of a difference as far as it goes for the fill. They ride pretty smooth. My truck doesn't pull or anything. So. Um, I thought my alignment might have been off, but no, nope, sure isn't. Everything's working great. So good news, I don't have to buy new tires or new rims. Yay! Just got to take this tire off, put it up in my rack, and this is going to be my spare now instead of it being the other one because I'd rather have a spare with a gouge in it than a everyday or with a gouge in it. But we'll see how long it takes for me to finally decide to change it out.